Welcome to On The Move from the Texas A&M Department of Kinesiology and Sport Management. In this episode, one student shares how her sport management courses have helped her outside the classroom. Howdy and welcome to another episode of On The Move. I'm Chelsea Reber and today I am joined by Lauren Gadalis. She is a senior sport management student at Texas A&M. Lauren, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. So you are from Lexington, Kentucky. How did you get to Texas A&M? My story is a little bit unconventional. It's a little bit different than most. I graduated high school in 2020, so it was year of COVID. Mm. And um, I always wanted to go out of state for college, but you know, money and everything. I have three siblings, so my parents were going to have to pay for a lot of college. So I got an in-state offer from a college in Kentucky and kind of landed on that. It wasn't my dream school or anything, but it was a good offer. And so I wasn't pleased with it, but it was gonna, I was just going to move somewhere after college. That was going to be my plan. And like two weeks before the start of my um, freshman year, all the classes went online. And my dad called me and was like, why don't you move somewhere, gain residency, work, work there for a year, gain residency, and transfer. And you can be an in-state student and, you know, go somewhere that you really want to go. So about eight days before moving to College Station, I decided that A&M was going to be my long-term goal. Okay. And I uh, moved there and I worked for my dad online for a year did online classes, and then transferred my sophomore year. So I've lived in College Station since freshman year, but I haven't been a student. I've only been a student since sophomore year. So that was that's kind of how I ended up at a and And there's really no rhyme or reason. I just wanted a big school, out of state, big sports, mm-hmm. school spirit. I mean, not, not, not the important things, but the things that mattered to me. Um, and I'm still here, so it was a good decision. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, did you have any background about Texas A&M and the Aggie culture, the traditions, or was all of that kind of a big surprise to you? It was definitely a big surprise. People that aren't from Texas don't really know how big of a deal Texas A&M is as far as the traditions and things like that, but my mom's from Texas, so I spent a lot of summers in Texas, and I always loved Texas, and so that's really how I ended up here. My aunt went here also, and so that was kind of helped in deciding where I was going to go. So you had a little bit of a connection yes. to it. Okay, yes. that's great. So tell me more about being a sport management student. What do you love about it? And maybe what are some challenges that you've also encountered? I love being a sport management student. I can't tell you how many times I've called my parents and been like, oh my gosh, the classes I'm in, they're so cool. I, I enjoy everything about it. It never feels like I'm doing work mm. because we're always like doing fun, exciting things while we're learning. Um, I can't say enough good things about being a sport management student. Um, the professors are really, really invested in us. The The curriculum is really has really helped me know what I want to do when I am actually go into a career mm. because it's a lot of real life things that we learn. Um, and as far as challenges, the only real one that I can think of is just the girl to guy ratio in okay. the classes. Um, I've had a couple classes where it's just me and like one other girl. Mm. But it's kind of worked in my favor because then it's really easy to become friends with the girls because you all kind of band together. And then obviously I'm friends with all the guys too. Um, The class sizes are perfect size. They're not too big, not too small. So I've been able to make really great friends in my classes. So it hasn't even really been a problem. Mm -hmm. A lot of students have jobs when they're in college, um, but your job is kind of unique. You mentioned working for your dad online. So tell me a little bit more about the company called TreadCal. So TreadCal was invented by my dad in about 2013 is when, you know, he decided to go for it. And basically it's a company that creates customized protective athletic equipment like thigh pads, uh, shin guards, elbow sleeves, knee pads. And it's do- he does that through 3D foam designs. So like if um, like a thigh pad he'll make with um, number 13 mm-hmm. and the 13 is 3D. So it shows through the pants and that's. It's hard to even explain without a picture, but... It is, and I I hope we're going to have some B-roll to show maybe during this episode, because when I first looked at it online, I was because I was thinking, I have no idea what this is, Yeah, yeah. and then when you see it, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. A picture explains it perfectly. It really does. It's hard to verbalize what it is, but um, it's athletes love it because it adds a little bit of personalization to the uniform so that you can have exactly the design you want. And it's small enough where you, you know you won't get in trouble for wearing it, but you can still have something that separates you from 
you know, your teammates. Uh, yeah, and that's the thing is you can't change a uniform. Like right. you're not going right. to be able to go in and, and wear something totally different or crazy right. Or, right. or whatever. You have to follow so many guidelines, but this really does allow that yeah. customization. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit more about how your dad came up with the idea and, and kind of the start of the company mm-hmm. and then how the whole family got involved. So he, before I was even born, he always tells me the story, so this is just <laughs> word of mouth from what he's told me, but um, before I was born in the 90s, he was a football coach. Mm-hmm. And it always he always wondered why are there just three lines on the thigh pads? And he mm-hmm. would always tell us, even before he started this business, he would tell us when we were little, like, if you could have three lines, you could have a smiley face. You could have mm-hmm. the number one because, I mean, it's, it's showing three lines, so you could show anything. And one day I came home from middle school and he was at the table. He had gone to Michael's and he had bought an X-Acto knife and foam. And he was at the table. He was carving out like numbers and stuff. And then he put it under my brother's football pants and it showed through really well. Mm. And he was like, I think I might be onto something with this. And we all thought it was super cool. But we were like, oh, you know, dad's just, you know, has this idea. But whatever. He's doing an arts and crafts project. Yeah, whatever. (laughs) It'll probably be nothing. And then... Eventually, he just decided to go for it Mm -hmm. and, you know, bought some prototypes and stuff. And now it's a full family business. It's just the only people that work for the company are my dad, my mom, me, and then my three brothers. So it's a true family-run business. Mm -hmm. Um, Role-wise, everybody plays a different role, but day-to-day, everybody's role is different. Okay. Because, like, for instance, if we get a team order Mm -hmm. from, you know, a football team, it's we're all working on that order. Somebody's unsticking the sticker. Someone's sticking them on. Somebody's packaging them. Someone's scanning them. So it just depends day to day what we have to do. And like when football season, because football is our biggest sport. Sure. When football season is in season, then we're working mostly on just making pads the whole time. But okay. when it's not, we're doing more of the marketing side and like, mm. you know, it's, it's up and down. So that's why everybody's role, you know, constantly changes. Yeah. But and your official title is marketing manager. Yes. So what is that? What does that entail? So because I am out of state, there's only so much that I can do. And I found that the marketing, you know, is something that I can do no matter where I am. And that's mm-hmm. why that's why initially I kind of started doing it. And then I found a real love for it. Um, my biggest thing is I run our TikTok account, mm-hmm. which is um, it's been awesome because it's basically free marketing. You know, we just right. post videos and if they go viral you know, mm-hmm. we make a lot of sales. And so um, I've, we've generated, I've generated over 61,000 followers on our TikTok account. We have around 20 million views and like one and a half million likes on that account. So it's done really well. Um, and then I also, I'll do like the email campaigns that we send. Um, and then aside from marketing, when I'm in college, I also do the website, like mm-hmm. anytime we're adding products or, um, you know, need an edit on the website, add this, add that. That's what I do because it's one less thing for my dad to do and Mm -hmm. I can do it while I'm in Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's really my role. But marketing when I'm home is like, not not so much my sole role because I can help with everything else. You're so there. It just depends on. where yeah. I am and what yeah. time of year it is. Depending depends what my role is. So what have you taken from your classes at Texas A and M and implemented into your job? Well, the the great thing about the sport management classes is that a lot of them are real life. We do a lot of like real life projects and assignments. Mm-hmm. So, like right now we're teamed up. I'm teamed up with this baseball firm in Katy, Texas, mm-hmm. and we're doing um, a marketing campaign for them and like a whole presentation and the good thing about that is like I catch myself finding ideas that I'm using for that that I want to use for TreadCal and it's happened a bunch of times in the sales class I've found sales techniques that I've used Um, anything like that it's just the fact that we do real life things has really helped me you know oh I have this idea I'm going to try it for TreadCal and usually I can find a way to use an idea I use for class like in a TikTok or Mm -hmm. in a marketing campaign Mm -hmm. so it's helped a lot. How have the relationships with your professors benefited both your work life and just your personal life and your school life? My professors are like, I, they are like the most incredible people I've ever met. They are so impressive. And the great thing about all my professors is that I have a really good relationship with them. They, they really strive to have relationships with their students. And like I showed them the NFL films episode, um, and they were so supportive they would give me some ideas. They would say, have you done this? They'd ask about it. And um, I know that if I were to call them right now and need advice or need help, that they would answer and they would help me. Mm-hmm. And I know if I were to call them in 10 years and say, hey, I need advice, that they would help me. So even more than anything I've learned in the classroom, I think one of the most valuable things that I'm taking 
from the sport management department is the networking connections mm-hmm. that I've made with my professors. Mm-hmm. I loved the story that your dad told in that NFL Films video about Jordan Howard wearing the thigh pads, Mm -hmm. wearing the tread cow pads, and scoring a touchdown. Mm -hmm. And he kind of looked at you guys and he was like, we made it to the NFL. That just has to be the coolest feeling because it's not just high school teams that are taking your products or or buying your products. You've got major players in the NFL who are, you know, sporting your products every single week during, during their games. Was there one athlete in particular though, that got you really excited when you realized that he was wearing tread cow? I was in high school and I had my phone on my desk and we weren't supposed to be on our phone, but my dad texted us or texted the family group chat in the middle of the school day. And I was like, oh no, I hope that's like not an emergency or something. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, pulled my phone aside and I looked and it was a screenshot of a DM um, request, a direct message request from Odell Beckham Jr. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it said um, something like, hey, um, I heard about your pads and I really want to get a pair. Something like that. He was really mm-hmm. nice. But I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, like if he's like the most followed NFL player, like he has more followers than Tom Brady, like this is huge. And right. I remember thinking like that is the guy that like really confer- like confirmed that we were like a real, we were really yeah. doing it. But also we also had um, Kyler Murray, mm-hmm. who I'm a big fan of. Um, and he was really, really great. He posted us on his Instagram story and he talked about my dad in an interview um, so I remember thinking like, wow, like he, that, you know, that's really cool. And then also, um, Russell Wilson, I thought we just got him this past year and, um, I like him cause I like his wife, Sierra, but, yeah. um, <laughs> he, um, he even sent my dad a signed Jersey, uh, his signed Jersey this oh, summer, like so just cool. to thank him. Mm-hmm. So things like that, that I'm just like, wow, like they really know, they really know what Treadcal is. Like they, you know, like they're sending us things, they're posting about us. Mm-hmm. Like it's a really big deal. So yeah. those are the, I would say the three biggest players that I was like, wow. And it's funny you bring up Kyler Murray. I I saw his interview and I saw his mention and he wears one with a a Bruce Lee silhouette. So, I mean, these get so specific. Like it's not just a number. Mm -hmm. It's not just a smiley face. Some of these are really, really detailed. And a lot of those, like, especially like the Bruce Lee one, like he'll only do that for Kyler Murray because, you know, it's Kyler Murray. It'd be hard to make that. It takes a lot of work to make it. But um, a lot of the NFL players have gotten super creative. They'll mm-hmm. wear their own logo, like they have their own personal logos. Mm-hmm. That's what um, OBJ wears. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's that's what I think that they like about it is like the options are endless. Yeah. So in you know yeah, if they can come up with it and yeah, it, it's exactly. gonna look good on exactly. that you know size yeah. of a pad. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So when you got to Texas A and M, were there any players at A and M who were currently wearing tread cow? No, there were okay. not. But we did have we had players that were from A and M that went to the NFL okay. that eventually wore them. Um, Von Miller, mm-hmm. he didn't wear them at A and M, but he wears them. Mm-hmm. And um, Mike Evans, okay, they both wear them now in the NFL, but none at A and M when I got there. Mm-hmm. So did you change that? I did. Okay, <laughs> I. Um, it's like now that I think about it, I was like, I can't believe that I did this because this is so something I wouldn't have done five years ago. But I would I direct messaged all the players and I would just say, hey, it's I'm Lauren. I go mm-hmm. to AM. My dad owns this company. And if you're interested, I have a code and like um, here's the website. And because my dad always tells me he's always like the worst answer you're going to get is no. Right. Like it's the worst thing you're going to hear. Sure. So if, as soon as you can accept that, it makes it way easier to like put yourself out there mm-hmm. and try new things. And so eventually I was like, you know what? He said he would pay me commission. And sure, I'd like to see if I could do it. And so I started with A&M and then I ended up doing it with other football players at other colleges, just kind of saying, hey, I'm a college student too. Like Mm -hmm. my dad owns this company. Here's 10% off if you want to use my code. Um, And it worked. I got at A&M, I ended up getting um, Buddy Johnson. Okay. And Dan Moore. They're both playing for the Steelers now. Mm -hmm. And they've both reordered since now that they've gone to the NFL. Um, We also have... Um, Damani Richardson, mm-hmm. um, Antonio Johnson. And there's a few others that I can't think of right now, but it, and now there are players on the yeah. AM team wearing them. Which That's is awesome. awesome. So, what are some of the designs? Do you know? Yes. Yeah, so, um, Buddy and Dan, um, Big Dan is what he goes by, <laughs> wore um, their number and then the AM logo. Okay. I know that Damani wears D Money. That's oh, like nice. his saying. Yeah. His, name, his uh, show me Damani is, mm-hmm. is his saying. And then um, Antonio Johnson wears Ain't Safe on his, which is like mm-hmm. a funny little mm-hmm. saying. Um, but yeah, some of them, half the players I would say like to stick to the, you know, just the number and the logos and mm-hmm. the other half get really creative yeah. with it. So 
And for some colleges, from my understanding, you guys have full blown like contracts or yeah. accounts like with the entire uh -huh. team. Like mm -hmm. you're you're able to provide for. The I know school we have um, like Auburn. I know we have a couple of like the Florida schools, not you, mm -hmm. or yeah, University of okay. Florida, I know we have. Okay. Um, and usually that's in the summer. That's what we're doing is we're, we're putting together all the colleges that we have contracts with. We're yeah. putting them all together all summer. Yeah, because you've got to be able to ship that season. out yeah. 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 before August, yeah. basically. So so how for an NFL player, for instance, like let's say Kyler Murray, how many pairs of pads does he need for one season? Usually, well, it depends. Like, for instance, Kyler Murray, he only ordered that one pair, and it, okay. it lasted him. Oh, okay. But but some players, they'll order they'll order five or six pairs, mm -hmm. and they'll swap them, sure. and they'll wear them together. Um, but they do – they are durable. Mm -hmm. They last the whole mm -hmm. season. And so usually they don't end up buying too many, but there are players that buy, will buy multiple pairs just mm -hmm. so they – but not necessarily for the – so that they can – because if they get ruined or anything, but more because – if they want to have multiple different designs that sure, they want to swap sure. in and out. And then obviously this is also just available to the public. Anybody yeah. can go on your website mm -hmm. and you mentioned it earlier. It's not just the football thigh pads. Yeah. You guys have soccer shin guards. Yes. I think I saw volleyball knee pads yes. and elbow so, sleeves. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a little of everything. We're still kind of breaking into those sectors. Um, I just actually went in December. I went to Philadelphia with my dad to the United Soccer coaches convention and um that was awesome kind of just get to put your name out there mm -hmm. and we got some team orders there and things like that but it really I mean it's taken this long to get into football so we you know it's gonna take some time to get into the other sports mm -hmm. but slowly but surely we're trying to you know break into those sports so it's been so interesting talking to professors and students from the sport management department mm -hmm. or, or section yeah. of the department here because everybody comes with a different story like I've talked equipment I've talked sustainability in facilities. We've talked about just all sorts of things. And what would your advice be to a sport management student who is kind of like, I want to get involved. I want to be in sports, but I'm really not sure what there is. Obviously there are so many yeah. options. Yes. Yeah. Well, the great thing is I've done, I've been involved in sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. And I think honestly, everything kind of comes down to the same thing. And it's about being able to put yourself out there. And it's kind of like what my dad says where he's like, you know, the worst answer you can get is no. You kind of have to remember that. And then once you can accept that, you know, it's easier to put yourself out there to figure out what you like. And then I would also say kind of, kind of contradictory to that, but say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. So like any opportunity you're given, I would say, say yes, just try it, try everything once, yeah. see what you like, especially to, you know, young students that are going to be graduating and going into the field. Mm -hmm. Say yes to everything. Um, you know, you don't know what you like until you try it. And mm -hmm. so I've realized that kind of as I've gotten experience in different sectors, mm -hmm. what I prefer. And I've realized that I really love marketing. And I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't really tried and like, you know, a couple times my dad will tell me I don't like that. And I'll be like, okay, and I'll change it. And then you, do, you know, I just mm -hmm. keep trying. And that's what I've realized that by saying yes to everything, I've gained a lot from that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's a great piece of advice. Um, what are your plans for the future? Are we sticking with TreadCal? Do you think you'll ever try to, you know, branch out on your own and do something different? I think the plan right now is to work for my dad. Okay. He told me he has a position ready for me once I graduate. <laughs> um, so probably I'll end up moving back to Kentucky and working for him and getting to do, I mean, like I said, he's still a full-time lawyer. Right. He works This truly constantly. is a side gig yeah, for him. Yeah, it really him. is. Oh it gosh. really is. It truly is. Mm -hmm. So um, that would help him a lot. And I know that it's something that I, I mean, I've done it for years now. And mm -hmm. I know it's something that I'd be good at. So that's the plan for now. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll see. We'll yeah. see where I end up, though. Any of your brothers following in your footsteps and coming to A&M? No, I no. have. I, well, <laughs> They, you know, I have one brother that plays college baseball okay. at a college in Kentucky, so his is different. But um, my littlest brother actually has set mentioned that he would like to maybe try and do yeah. what I did. Yeah. So we'll see on that. He's in eighth grade, though. Okay. So you got know. a little bit of time. Yeah, he has to, some time to, to think decide, about it and so. decide. So we'll see on that. What has been one of your favorite moments here in Aggie Land? Because I know it's coming up to an end, and um, obviously, I'm sure you've made some great memories. Oh my gosh, that's a good question. Um, I have made some great memories. I mean, like, my best friends here. I actually yeah. got the opportunity to do um, an episode for the college tour, mm -hmm. which is um, hosted by Alex Boy Boylan, I think is mm -hmm. how you say it. And um, I auditioned for it, and it goes all around. You know, they look at everything at A&M mm -hmm. and um, discuss it. And I got to discuss, like, the location, and I got to show them Century Square and 
um, Aggie Park and all mm-hmm. that. That was a really, really good memory because it was super fun and my friends all yeah. got to do it with me. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I would say that's one thing that really stands out because I really got to represent A&M mm-hmm. and like show all the great parts about it. And I loved sure. getting to do that. And then finally, you know, when did you kind of realize that choosing A&M and specifically the kinesiology and sport management department, when did you realize that, you know, you knew you were in the right place, that this was the right fit for you? Well, I had originally, when I, before I had transferred, I was business okay. and I like hadn't ever really thought anything different. Like I always thought that's what I would do. Mm-hmm. And when I went to transfer, I had too many credits to transfer into the business school. And I was like, oh man, what am I going to do? So my dad, we were looking at all the, li- all the list of all the, um, different degree degrees. plans. And yes. Things. And mm-hmm. he was like, what about sport management? I was like, you know, that's a really good idea. And so, you know, that's what I enrolled as. And I, the, truly the first like couple weeks of classes, I was like, wait, this is awesome. Yeah. Like we get to talk about sports, but it's all, <laughs> it's still kind of rooted in business. Sure. So it's not like, it's really, really fun because we're talking about football and soccer and all these sports, but it doesn't feel like you're doing a lot of work. Mm-hmm. I would like, seriously, like the first or first or second week I called my parents and was like, I'm so glad that I picked sport management. It's so much fun. I loved all my professors that first year, and I was like, this was, this was like God's sign that I wasn't supposed to be a business. I was supposed yes. to be in sport management. That's awesome. Lauren, is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? I think we covered it all. We, we covered, covered a lot. lot. Yeah. Well, TreadCal, again, I guess I, I'll give you an opportunity to kind of plug you guys, like website, social media, where can people find TreadCal? Um, well, our, all our handles are TreadCal, T-R-E-D-C-A-L. Mm-hmm. And... Um, the website's treadcal.com. So um, if you look, if you even if you were to look up like custom thigh pads or anything, that's what yeah. Treadcal will pop yeah. up. So if anybody's interested in looking up what they look like or anything, just type in the name and it'll pop up. All right. Lauren, thank you so much for joining thank us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to On The Move. You can catch our episodes while you're on the move by going to Spotify, Apple, or Google. And to learn more about the Department of Kinesiology and Sport Management, head to knsm.tamu.edu. This podcast is housed in the School of Education and Human Development at Texas A&M University, where we transform lives.